happy, happy birthday to Dolly. This is a tribute to Dolly Parton as she celebrates turning 78 and the incredible life and success of Tennessee's favorite songbird. So let's look at her life from the day she was born to today. Dolly was born on January 19, 1946 in a rural area of Sevier County, Tennessee. She was the fourth child among 12 kids. Her father, Robert Lee, who went by Lee, was a tobacco farmer and construction worker, but never received a formal education. Her mother, Abby Lee Owens, was a preacher's daughter and devoted her life to raising and caring for the family. At the age of five, Dolly composed a song called Little Tiny Tassel Top. The song was a tribute to her precious doll made of a corn cob with corn silk hair. Since Dolly couldn't yet really read or write, her mother wrote down the words to her song. And little barefoot Dolly would sing into her tin can microphone, sitting on top of a tobacco stick that was wedged into the boards of their front porch. She even crafted herself a guitar at the age of seven. Parton began performing as a child, and by 10 she was singing on local radio and television programs in Knoxville. She was a regular on the Cass Walker Show. Dolly Parton recorded her first single, Puppy Love, in 1957, co-writing the song with her uncle when she was just 11. Parton vividly remembers the 30-hour bus ride to Lake Charles, Louisiana for the recording. The single was released in 1959, but it didn't chart. When Dolly was just 13, she had her first performance at the Grand Ole Opry. Johnny Cash introduced the young Parton on that night, telling the audience that there's a girl from East Tennessee and her daddy's listening at home and she'd be in real trouble if she didn't sing tonight. Well, Dolly did sing You Gotta Be My Baby by George Jones and received three encores that night. As the young Dolly was growing up in the 60s, big things were on the horizon. She and her uncle ventured into songwriting and recording between 1962 and 1966 but despite some setbacks, hearing her voice on a Knoxville radio station brought her immense pride. And during that time, of course, Dolly moves on to Nashville the day after her high school graduation. In May 1966, Dolly Parton married Carl Dean. The intimate event took place in a Baptist church in Ringgold, Georgia, with only Parton's mother, Carl, and herself present. Parton and her uncle, Bill Owens, continued to find success with songs they penned, charting in the top 10, like Put It Off Until Tomorrow and The Company You Keep. Dolly Parton's career gained momentum in January of 67 when she found success on the Billboard country charts with Dumb Blonde and Something Fishy. Her first full-length album, Hello, I'm Dolly, released in July of that year, marking the beginning of her rise. Working with Porter Wagner on The Porter Wagner Show, they released The Last Thing on My Mind, reaching number seven on Billboard's country chart by the year end. Parton and Wagner's collaboration led to their first album, Just Between You and Me, and her solo debut, Just Because I'm a Woman, in 1968. And in 1969, she was inducted into the Grand Ole Opry. With her big voice, platinum wigs, and sparkly outfits, Dolly created hit after hit in the 60s, and this continued in the 70s. I'm talking chart toppers like Jolene and I Will Always Love You. So let's look at some of these. In 1971, Joshua is her first solo written song and reaches number one on the charts. And also released is the mega hit, Code of Many Colors, which again reaches number one. In 73, Jolene becomes one of her biggest selling singles ever selling millions of copies, and in 74, she records I Will Always Love You, which later on, as we know, becomes a global pop hit for Whitney Houston. The following year, in 1975, Dolly wins the CMA Female Vocalist of the Year Award. All of her solo achievements led to the end of her collaboration with Wagner in 1976, paving the way for her own syndicated TV show, Dolly, in 1977, Parton had a standout year with two critically acclaimed albums. First, the New Harvest, First Gathering album was her first self-produced album as well as her first effort aimed specifically at the pop charts. And the second album, 
Here You Come Again is her first single to reach number one on the country charts for five straight weeks, making it the biggest hit of her career, and it hit number three on the pop chart, becoming a huge crossover hit. The 80s did not disappoint with Dolly. In 1980, Dolly co-stars with Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin in the hit comedy film 9 to 5, featuring the chart-topping title track. She secured two Grammy wins for Best Country Song and Best Female Country Vocal Performance. Following the success of 9 to 5, Parton's influence expanded in the early 80s. She starred in a film with Burt Reynolds and collaborated with Kenny Rogers in 1983 on Islands in the Stream, which topped multiple charts and really solidified Parton's multi-faceted success. Dolly said, I always thought that if I made it big or got successful, I wanted to come back to my part of the country and do something great. And that she did. In 1988, she founded the Dollywood Foundation, initiating projects like promising $500 to local students who graduated from high school. And of course, the Imagination Library, providing free books to children eventually worldwide. Dolly closed up the 80s on a high note with a white limousine album. The first single song called Why'd You Come In Here Looking Like That. The song was Parton's 22nd number one on the country chart. As another decade rolled around, Dolly became the only woman to chart number one records in three different decades. In 1991, she collaborated with Ricky Van Shelton on Rockin' Years from the album Eagle When She Flies which earned her another number one hit. In 93, Dolly releases the album, Slow Dancing with the Moon, which features a number of famous guest artists. We haven't even turned the century yet, so let's just say she continues to create albums and music and receive a bunch of awards. But that's not all. In 94, Dolly Parton ventured into writing with her autobiography, Dolly, My Life and Other Unfinished Business. So let's close out this phenomenal century with Dolly being inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 1999, Country Music's highest honor. As we transition to a new century, Dolly doesn't slow down. She is transitioning to bluegrass, really from 1999 to 2003. Parton's albums like The Grass is Blue and Little Sparrow earned her Grammy recognition. The Little Sparrow album in particular features a blend of Appalachian folk, bluegrass, and country gospel styles. And this one was dedicated to Parton's father, Lee Parton, who died in November of 2000. During this decade, Dolly's contributions to the arts and culture earns her more honors and awards from organizations beyond the music and film industry. She was named a living legend by the Library of Congress in 2004 for her enrichment of the American cultural heritage. In 2005, she received the U.S. government's National Medal of Arts from President Bush. And in 2006, she was recognized at the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts in D.C. for her lifetime artistic achievement. Dolly also hits a milestone with her foundation given over 5 million books in 2007. Since 2010, Dolly Parton's been quite the entertainment powerhouse. She gave her voice to the animated film Gnomeo and Juliet in 2011, where garden gnomes tell a Shakespearean tale. Then came Joyful Noise in 2012, a musical about a widow and a mom saving a Georgia town's gospel choir. Her song, Coat of Many Colors, got a TV film treatment in 2015 and then a sequel in 2016. And on a personal note, in 2016, Parton announced that she and Dean would renew their vows in honor of their 50th wedding anniversary. In response to the 2016 Great Smoky Mountain wildfires, Parton was one of a number of country music artists who participated in a telethon to raise money for the victims of the fires. Her fund, called My People Fund, provided $1,000 a month for six months to over 900 families affected by the wildfires for a total of about $10,000 per family. Jumping to 2019 and Dolly's eight-part Netflix series called Heartstrings aired. These series of shows were based on her 
on stories about her songs. Also in 2019, a TV special, Dolly Parton, 50 Years at the Opry, celebrated her remarkable journey, even though it had really been 60 years since her first Opry performance. Reflecting on those early days, Parton shared memories of watching backstage, dreaming of one day being part of the Opry's legendary performers. Now having seen her dream come true, she wonders if some aspiring child might think, I bet Dolly Parton once stood here, or I'm standing where Dolly Parton stood. And if you like documentaries, check out Here I Am on Netflix. It was released in December of 19. The film offers a look into the life and musical career of Dolly Parton, which is told through interviews with friends, companions, and Dolly herself. So if you move on to 2020, she took to Netflix again, producing and starring in Dolly Parton's Christmas on the Square, where Dolly wrote all the songs featured in the film. Then, in December 2022, NBC aired Dolly Parton's Mountain Magic Christmas. Dolly releases her first novel called Run, Rose, Run, co-authored with James Patterson in 22. Dolly Parton was nominated for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but initially turned it down. She felt she might split votes or might be taken away from more deserving rock artists. However, she later changed her mind and would accept the honor gracefully. So on November 5th, 2022, in Los Angeles, she was inducted alongside some others into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. All right, so in 2023, she has another New York Times bestseller. Dolly comes out with a book about her sense of style with exclusive images from her private costume archive. It's called Dolly Parton Behind the Scenes. Dolly also collaborated with ESPN for Monday Night Football soundtracks. So yeah, Dolly keeps shining in the spotlight. So what's more for 2024? Well, she sure will keep going as long as she can. We know she is opening up a new Dolly Parton experience within the Dollywood theme park this spring. I do a ton of videos on Dollywood, so catch those for all the updates through the years and more to come. Dolly, as she celebrates turning 78, has a net worth that is said to be upwards of $650 million. And I don't think she has many plans of slowing down. She makes the world a whole lot brighter with her mountain charm and golden heart. Her Smoky Mountain dreams really did come true. So let's all wish this Tennessee songbird the happiest birthday as we celebrate her incredible rags to rhinestone journey. Happy birthday, Dolly. I wish you many more.